Now we are going to go over uh, section 11.2, um, which are the inferences of two means. Now, conveniently, uh, as mentioned, they're um, conveniently they've separated the dependent and independent, as I mentioned, not only proportion, but a lot of the sections throughout here um, involving mean, including um, there's the idea of dependent and independent variables because you're dealing with two variables. In section 11.2, they only go over dependent variables, which is very convenient. This video is going to be pretty quick because this is actually really straightforward. Um, so dependent samples, if you imagine two variables being dependent with, um, with, um, with means, it's actually way easier to picture. So, um, and what you'll notice is uh, when you take the differences of, of, of means because um, you're trying to compare them you, when you take the differences uh, it'll end up being very similar to a chapter 10 mean problem almost identical so I uh, will jump directly into uh, the well first off the checks um, the the sample is obtained using simple random sampling or through a randomized experiment um, the uh, which is the same from chapter 10. The only difference here is that uh, the sample data is, um, is, is a match pair. So, um, and ag again, you, you may remember that that's the same thing as dependent sampling. And the difference are normally distributed with no outliers or uh, sample size and is uh, greater than or equal to 30. Same thing from uh, chapter 10 uh, with means. And um, the sample values are independent. Um, of each other. So another way of saying that, uh, similar to before, is the sample has sizes no more than 5% of the population. Um, you won't have to deal with that too much. Um, but the most important things are that they, first off, they have to be dependent uh, uh, variables from each other. So um, each of the variables are dependent of each other. It has to be a randomized experiment, and your sample size has to be greater than or equal to 30, or the original distribution is normal. So, it's very similar to chapter 10, and the similarities are almost identical uh, um, from comparing means that are, uh, that are de dependent and chapter 10 measurements and means, or uh, hypothesis test involving means. Um, so, let's go ahead and just look at an example, a very easy one to kind of um, check out. Um, Okay, um, let's find a new blue one. Car rentals, here we are. Um, so what they're doing is they're comparing cars. Uh, so I'm looking at number 14. So I'm jumping directly into this problem here. First thing I'm writing. So we're going to go over car rentals, and this is from, again, section... 11.2 difference of means where they're uh, dependent variables okay so the following data represents the daily rental for a compact automobile charged by uh, two uh, car rental companies thrifty and Hertz so um, there are two different uh, variables completely uh, one one company versus another company but what makes it dependent is that we're looking in ten different locations so that being, uh, for example, they looked in Chicago, and they checked out Thrifty and Hertz. Then they went to Los Angeles, and they checked out Thrifty and Hertz. So the dependent part of this is that they're checking the same cities and how much uh, the car rentals cost um, at those two different uh, um, at the companies, Thrifty and Hertz. So... Um, that's what makes it dependent is that we're looking in the same location. Um, so, all right. Um, so let's see here. Ten locations, but the thrifty is less than the. Ex uh, so what we want to test is whether thrifty is less expensive than Hertz at the alpha equals zero point one level of significance. So let's go ahead and look back at the checks. So we'll see that the checks 
Um, the samples obtained using simple random samplings or through a randomized experiment. Um, so we can assume that, that it is obtained through a randomized experiment. Okay, so we're doing the checks first. So we're going to assume um, random. Okay. Step two, the sample data are matched pairs. And they're matched pairs or dependent. Uh, they're dependent. And the idea of matched pairs is we have a pair representing each of the cities. We have thrifting hertz from Chicago. There's a pair. We have thrifting hertz from Los Angeles, another pair. So you can, can think of it like that. Okay. So um, let's go ahead and um, so, yeah, because of the location, they are match pairs. And the third check is that the difference are normally distributed. And it actually mentions in a note, a normal probability plot and box plot of the date, uh, data indicates that the difference are approximately normally distributed with no outliers. So there we go. We add that check, normally distributed with no outliers. And four, the sample va uh, values are independent. Um, and we can assume this is true. Um, and the idea is uh, we're only checking 10 different locations. And I'm sure that 10 different locations is much less than 5% um, than of the total population. So um, I get, I'm pretty sure that there's more than um, so 5%. That would be... 200 there's more than 200 locations here um, that I mean there's more than 200 different locations um, that have thrifting Hertz uh, um, places actually I'm not really sure but we'll assume that's true Assu assume independent and um, and notice that it's dependent when comparing each of the uh, like thrifty to hertz, but what what they're talking about uh, being independent is individually thrifty, thrifty. Each of the values uh, like each of the cities from thrifty are independent of each other, okay. And each of the hertz, each of the cities' uh, prices are independent of each other, okay. So that's the different, it's kind of confusing how you had dependence and independence, but it's talking about kind of comparing two different types of things. So um, it'd be kind of confusing, but anyways. Um, um, yeah, anyways, uh, let's go ahead and go to step one. We're ready to look at that. Step one, um, we have um, the null and alternative hypothesis. So um, actually, before we get to this, I would like to kind of show you in general what we're doing. So look at the chart. And I, I'm just going to show you, the, uh, I'm, I would be making a new column to the right of Hertz. So here's thrifty, and here's all the prices, and here's hertz, and all the prices. And now I'm going to make a new column, which is differences. The differences of the new column, and we're just going to take the difference of two, these two variables. So 2181 minus 1899. We would find uh, so we would find each of these differences. Um, 2181 minus 1899. And we have 282. Okay, there's one difference, and th that's the difference for Chicago. Then we have 2989 minus 4899, and that's negative 19 um, point one, the difference of Los Angeles. Then we have 17.9 minus. 1999 negative 
You would keep going down the list until we have all of the cities. Um, honestly, I'm not going to do all of that right now. Um, but just imagine you're turning these two different variables and finding the difference of them, and you're building a new column, and you're building one variable. You're not actually going to be calculating these two columns except for finding the differences and building this right off. And you'll have 10 different differences, D being differences, and that becomes one variable. So this is exactly like doing a uh, difference um, or doing a, um, a hypothesis test of a one variable hypothesis test on a single mean, all right? So, um, which is chapter 10. So it's almost, it's almost identical. It's just you have slightly different um, uh, variables, but it means the same exact thing. Um, and we'll get to that. And so what we have is H naught, and what we're saying is the population mean of these values, all of them, we're only looking at 10, but the population difference, subscript D, the population difference is zero, which means that there is no difference between them. So similar to proportion, we're subtracting these two, and what it means to have zero is that these are the same. There's no difference, okay? And that's what they're saying that the overall population mean is of the differences. H alternative is um, mu sub D. And now it, it, it all depends on if it's a one tail or two tail test. But we can see based off the wording here is that um, Test whether Thrifty is less expensive than Hertz. So notice that we're doing Thrifty minus Hertz. So if Thrifty is less expensive, so we're um, if Thrifty is less expensive than Hertz, then we, we're taking a smaller number and subtracting a larger number. Now this is where it gets kind of weird. And so what we would be getting is a negative value. So what we're saying is, is the difference is less than. You kind of have to think about what you're subtracting to get the difference. You're taking a smaller value because thrifty is less than hertz based off the claim. So you do less than zero. Okay, see how I got that logic there? Um, now, good. So we have a left tail test based off the wording of the claim, similar to back in chapter 10. And step two is given to you, and that's your alpha. And uh, so that is alpha equals 0 0.1. And um, then we do the, the test statistic, step three. Now, imagine we had all 10 of these. We don't actually know, uh, if you're thinking about the population, similar to, to doing the mean from chapter 10, a hypothesis test, we are not given the population standard deviation. We only can calculate the sample standard deviation of these differences. Okay, And we denote this S sub D. Um, and so anyways, uh, so we, what we end up having a uh, T distribution because we don't know sigma, the population standard deviation of the differences. So this is equal to D hat, which means the sample mean, so the average of those 10 values, minus 0, the claim, uh, essentially the claim difference, um, use that value, similar to chapter 10, would be going here. And notice it will always be zero. So actually all you need is d hat divided by s sub d um, s sub d is the sample uh, standard deviation of this. So you can 
put these into your calculator and do a one var stats on this. Do one var stats on this and we'll end up getting um, our sample standard deviation of our differences and divide it by the square root of n. And n in this case is how many cities did we look at? And that's 10 different cities because we have 10 different differences from the 10 different cities. So that would be the square root of n. Okay. And that's the equation and kind of telling you where it all comes from. And from here and um, all the way out, it's, it's identical to uh, doing chapter 10 um, of um, hypothesis test on a, on a mean. So if you have any questions, let me know, but it's identical. Um, all you have to remember is kind of that kind of weird idea of, of reading the claim and figuring out what goes here. Um, it's kind of goofy, but it makes sense. Um, and also um, knowing what each of these variables represent and it's based off the difference. Okay, And so you do this idea of taking the difference only when you have dependent samples. Well, notice in 11.3 we can't do this process. And it's a little bit, uh, it gets a little more complicated in some ways. Uh, but not really. Um, but anyways, step uh, so step three, we, we would end up calculating that. I'm not going to go ahead and do that. Um, you can figure that out. And then you find the critical value and compare the test statistic to the critical value. Same idea. And then we do the, um, the claim, or not the claim, the, the conclusion, and that's based off the wording. And as we can see, just to let you know, the claim here, um, does, so step one of the flow chart, would we ha uh, have the condition of equality uh, in the claim? And we can easily see that uh, that would be false because we're testing whether Thrifty is less than expensive than Hertz. So that would be no. And then you would go to step two. Did we reject or fail to reject? You would figure that out. What, it wouldn't be too bad. And then um, that will tell you the wording of your conclusion. Okay, so the only uh, as you can see, you're just going to find the differences in when you have dependent samples and dealing with two variables. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's um, all we're going to talk about in this video. And let me know if you have any questions. Um, and. And uh, another thing you can do, as you may uh, realize, is you can use the T test from the on your calculator. First, you have to find the differences by hand. Then you can put those differences in a list, okay, in L1, for example, and do the T test. <coughs> and um, yeah, then you can figure out. All your information, your your uh, test statistic, your p-value, the main information you really need to know um, with your calculator. Anyways, let me know if you have any questions, and that's it.